Hello, I'm Kevin Field, and this is Radio Skills for Podcasters, Episode 4, Show Prep and Research. Learn the secrets secrets of of the the radio radio industry. industry. Create powerful podcasts. Powerful, powerful podcasts. This is Radio Radio Skills for Podcasters. Radio Skills for Podcasters. With With Kevin Kevin Field. Field. With Kevin Field. Enjoy the podcast. Hello and welcome to Radio Skills for Podcasters. My name is Kevin Fields and I do hope you enjoy the podcast. This podcast is always around 10 minutes. In each episode, I share with you the skills I've gained having worked in the radio industry for more than 20 years. I hope those skills will help you take your podcast to the next level. This is Radio Skills for Podcasters. In this episode, we'll be looking at show prep and research ahead of your podcast. Is there any point to show prep and using a show sheet? In the top tip of this podcast, we look at the beginning of your podcast. How should it start? Feedback and mentions later in the show, including the news that we're at New Media Europe Conference in September, and we are now an official media partner of the conference. Hurrah! Which is superb news and great to be on board. I'd like you to get in touch with the show. If you have a burning question, then please message via at radio underscore skills on Twitter or email skills at radio skills for podcasters dot com. Let's get into show prep and research. I love show prep. No, I do. Really. I've been involved in providing show prep services for years. And to hundreds of radio stations, not just directly through my own programs, that's ridiculous, but through a show prep service I launched back in 2005. It's called payforprep.com and still exists today. At the start, Pay for Prep provided a daily show prep sheet called The Morning Glory. It had newspaper headlines, important dates, one-liners, topical stories, quizzes, games that presenters and producers could use, the usual sort of stuff that you'd want and was often used by breakfast shows. Later, we moved to Pay on Demand, um, simply because creating that Morning Glory took so much work to do. So the Pay on Demand one-off products was better for us. One that was really successful, though, and continues to be used today is our Christmas package. It was a show prep package with everything you needed for Christmas to do a radio program. There's other downloads on the site too. Go and have a look. It's still there. Payforprep.com. Now I tell you this just to cement my link to show prep and why I say I love show prep and I think it's good. I also think it's a must do. It's key to do show prep for your show. Remember, content is king. I used to work with a really talented presenter. I mean, really talented. But he didn't do show prep, ever. He just rocked up and presented the shows. For a while, that talent got him through until the new boss came in with his new broom and he let him go. He'd become stale. He hadn't added anything new to his game in a long time. And he just didn't prep. And the new regime didn't like it. So they kicked him out the door. I don't know about you, but I can always tell if a, a radio show or a podcast or, or anything really hasn't been prepped. You know, when you go to an event and someone's standing up in front of you and talking and you know he hasn't prepped this one. Or if you listen to a podcast and it's kind of here, there and everywhere and they're floundering. You can just hear it, can't you? The best shows prep everything. The best performers prep and practice. Radio programs these days are planned right down to who says what and where. I'm not saying it's staged, ad lib happens, creativity happens, but it's planned. The big shows use above the line and below the line characteristics about their presenters. There's show roles that go into the show, which does what in what show and when. Meetings take place, planning days, week in, week ahead. It happens all the time. As a breakfast show producer, I'd hold daily setup briefings and debriefings with the team. We discussed new material on the fly as the show was going, but the show was planned. You must prep what you do. So hopefully this podcast can help you with that. The starting point is your show sheet. This is the simple template for your program laid out right in front of you on either an A4 printed sheet of paper or digitally on the screen. Your show sheet should tell you the principal things about your show. It doesn't need to be complicated. That's the first thing. It just needs to be there in some format. Your show sheet, perhaps the layout, should include the format right in front of you. Episode number, show title, how to get in touch, Facebook, Twitter. 
email in this episode info, date of the recording, if that's important for your show. You may have teases laid out in front of you, your call to action, the body of your show content, bulleted or scripted. If you're introducing a guest, you should have a cue written to introduce that guest so it doesn't repeat when the guest is actually on the show. Do you script or bullet point? In my view, that's up to you. I've worked with really big talent who doesn't script, just bullet points. But I've also worked with huge stars who script everything. Over the years, I've used both. Content is king. I said that earlier. Needless repetition is the enemy of good content. Purposeful repetition is the ally of good content. Let's look at different areas of prep. I thought I'd share my prep workflow for this podcast. So what I did ages ago, I mind mapped. Uh, If you don't know what mind mapping is, check it out in Google. It's very simple, drawing circles, putting words in between the circles and linking it all together. So in planning, I have my mind map. Don't worry about what goes down, just write. Draw circles right in them. Go wild. Put any idea that comes into your head connected to your subject matter. It still has to have purpose. Quantity, though, is key to a mind map. The more, the better. After mind mapping, I create a list out of all of that that's in front of me to theme the shows. These may change if something else becomes more relevant. And actually, by mind mapping, some things often do. I then create some rough notes on each theme. I'll look up some of the topics from my previous notes on radio training. I'll note down the title and what image I think should be great for the podcast. I always think about my brand keeping things together while I do this. I then open the script again and I rewrite it before I record. I add some bullet points to it and off I go, just like now recording. What about content, I hear you say? Where does that come from? Well, think structure. When prepping, think of the start, the middle and the end. The start is the headline. The middle is the elaboration, telling us the details and the body content, adding the stories in there. The end is the climax. And what's next? Perhaps a call to action or maybe to back up the original premise of your your start, your headline. You can add in personal experience. There's nothing like real knowledge. Curated podcasts by someone who has been there and done it are just brilliant. If you don't have it, that knowledge, get someone on your podcast who has. The internet. It's an age where, well... Let's face it, it's probably out there somewhere. You just have to verify that what you're reading is correct. Additionally, do have your own thoughts as well. You know, don't just leave it to what someone else has said. And also, I don't need to say Google, do I? Really? The one thing to say about Google, though, is have a look, do a search on Google research and search tips. There's so many great time-saving uses for Google that Google have created to help you to do a search and find them. Friends and colleagues, they can be a great source of information for your podcast. Archives. You own your own archives. It's essential to keep a copy of each of your show notes and the audio. It'll help you in the future with future production of shows, but also to help you understand where you've been and where you could go next. But try to keep them in order. Build a contacts database. Make sure you have your contact details up to date of whoever could be in your show. You never know when they become an integral part of the episode. Also, if people have got in touch with you in the past for feedback, keep them in the loop. Keep them in the show. We used to do this with radio programs. Whenever you hear people on the morning on a breakfast show giving their point of view, it's often a similar person who's been on in the past. We just used to rotate them around and call them up and go, Hi, Vera, have you got a view on this? Oh, yeah, of course I have. Brilliant, you're on. <laughs> Brainstorm and meetups. Talk with like-minded people about your podcast and ask in person what they'd like to hear. And of course, newspapers and magazines. I take cuttings and clippings all the time for show content from newspapers and magazines, some on the subject matter, some on other things. Just grab them when you need them. You never know what you can find that becomes show material. Learn the secrets of the radio industry. Radio skills for podcasters. I'm going to go through some quick liners to help you out. Be selective. Will it be remembered? Do it slightly differently to the competition. Ask, will it help achieve their goal? That's the listener. Will they learn something? Perhaps you could offer one thing that would change their journey in your podcast. Ask, what's in it for your listener? What do they want? Why should they care? Do the things people care about emotionally, intellectually, physically and spiritually. Make it sticky. How does your message stick? Create metaphors relate to your listener through things that are in your life that's in their life. Have a solution. Don't offer problems. People want to know why. 
Don't just supply facts and figures. Tell them why you're doing what you're doing. Tell stories. Tell me a story that makes it matter to me. And a little tip on how I gather show information. I carry around a recording device all the time and I record my thoughts about the podcast. I do this while driving, stuck in traffic. Lots of ideas come through in my head and I record them. People do look at me in a strange way, though, in the car next to me. Read everything associated with your subject matter and listen to everything associated with your subject matter. Digest, think and tell your side of that story. Seize the moment and create inspiring speech content. Oh, and live a real life too. Now, I realise we're just over 10 minutes right now, so please stick around for the top tip and some feedback here at Radio Skills of Podcasters, and you'll find out what we're going to do next time. This is Radio Skills for Podcasters. Radio Skills for Podcasters. With Kevin Field. This week's top tip is about the starting sequence of your podcast. Yeah, that bit right at the start. Some people drag them on just too long. They really do. In the UK, we have uh, Dragon's Den. Have you seen that? In the US, it's Shark Tank. Now, they're the same program, roughly, really. They have all these entrepreneurs who come on and and they try to get money out of a dragon or a shark, right? Got it. Problem I have is the starting sequence. I always fast forward it. I don't care anymore who the dragons are. I've heard it once. I don't need to hear every program. It goes on for about two minutes and I've just done out. So therefore, this week's top tip is to make sure your start counts. Get into the good stuff. A simple startup sequence is key to keep people listening. Don't do a really long thing with two minutes of music and no one talking. So the top tip is get to the good stuff. Have some really good imaging at the start, but then get into it. This week's feedback. Thanks to Rob Lawrence, who provided his idea on what uh, should be in the first three podcasts of Radio Skills for Podcasters. Uh, Check out Rob's podcast, inspirationofcreatives.com. Fine podcast. Enjoyed listening to that. Thanks to distortedview.com, comedy podcasters themselves. Very good. And Frank Conway from the Economic Rockstar podcast for favouriting episode two of Radio Skills for Podcasters, which was all about the format. Go back and listen. All you have to do is do radioskillsforpodcasters.com slash zero two. Also, as I said earlier, we're an official media partner of the New Media Europe podcast conference which is taking place on the 12th and 13th of september in manchester uk it's two days the choice to attend over 24 sessions prepared by some of the best speakers in the world they've got a fantastic lineup check it out on the website i'll give you that in a second it's a uh, it's a know-how conference really the inspiration for the event is that you come away knowing more than you came with and have a real buzz and know how how to move forward and to create new media content in whatever format you want to create it to book tickets you need to go to newmediaeurope.com better still listen to the new media europe podcast and little tip listen out for a special offer at the end of the each episode so anyway other than that hopefully i'll see you there in manchester on the 12th and 13th of september don't forget, also, you can get in touch, provide feedback and questions, skills at radioskillsforpodcasters.com or Twitter at radio underscore skills. Please, if you find time, rate the podcast on iTunes. Next time. Next time with Radio Skills for Podcasters. Next time on Radio Skills for Podcasters, we look at the word you and the word audience and we'll find out why you matters most. See you next time. Find us on Facebook. Google Plus. Radio Skills for Podcasters. At Radio underscore Skills on Twitter. Thanks for listening. www.radioskillsforpodcasters.com.